have some fun. Terribly well at times. <laughs> Golly, Sports Talk for Monday. Ranger owner Eddie Childs, Ranger player representative Rick Honeycutt discussing the possible baseball strikes. Understand the appeal of segments like this. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to Ticket Television. I'm Norm Hitzkus. On this week's show, we'll take you back to the Majestic Theater for highlights of my celebrity roast. We'll take you way back into the 70s for a story I did on a pocket computer that sort of picks winners at a racetrack. I'll even have a couple of poems I published as part of a book of poetry I wrote in the 70s. We've got the Corby Davidson Norm song from the roast. We got a lot of laughs coming up, so stay with us. Hi, this is Vicki Hitzkiss. I'm Norm's wife, but I don't have an impersonation of his laugh, but you can't do a better one than that dog Precious in the cartoons. <laughs> I can't even do it. I told you I couldn't do it. I don't have a favorite memory of his, except that I'm always so proud of him. He's always gracious to his guests. He knows everything. He's funny, he's great to be with, and he is off mic what he is on mic. He's a great, great guy. Hi, my friends. I want to say thank you to all my friends. <laughs> Can you imitate Norm? No, I cannot. Can you imitate him? No. You got a uh, Norm laugh for us? You want to try to imitate his laugh? <laughs> <laughs> I can't even do it. I told you I couldn't do it. <laughs> oh, Brito. <laughs> first look back at the roast of the Majestic Theater and MC Dale Hansen with a couple of those Hansen-like phrases. Incidentally, I do apologize. Uh, right up front, uh, this is kind of an embarrassing moment for me. I, I was called about uh, a month and a half ago saying that we were going to honor the most respected, the most knowledgeable, one of the longest running informative talk show hosts in Dallas, Fort Worth. And, they wanted me to MC that roast, and I, I've written all this great shit about Chuck Cooperstein. I got no place to go. Um, oh God, 25 years. Now here's the only question I have, though. 25 years he's been on Dallas radio, but let's be honest about this. A lot of it was KERA, and about four years of it was Norm Hitzkus and Leon Simon on 570 Cliff. I mean, I think we all agree that 570 Cliff is the Firestone tires of local radio here, don't we? I mean, it's, um... I mean, I mean, it looked all right, and then the sun just blew up. You know, so... It's, uh... I mean... It's... <laughs> I 
You know, if I get fired for that some hammer, you're going with me. You know, you... <laughs> hammer says, go for it, go for it. Bennett will think it's funny. <laughs> you know, so... But anyway, I mean, he's on K-E-R-A, and he's on 570 Cliff with Leon Simon. I mean, my question is simply this. If nobody hears you, does that still count as being on the radio? So. Now, I'm going to take you back into the 70s when I was working for Newsweek Television in New York City. And I did this TV feature on this pocket calculator that picks winners at a racetrack. Well sort of picks winners at a racetrack. Everybody has a system for picking winners at the track. Some pour over the racing form. Less logical types might bet a horse because its name reminds them of a favored uncle, while others seek advice from close friends. If none of those methods have worked for you, perhaps you'd be ready to try the racetrack computer, a kind of pocket calculator that projects the winners of races based on past performance data. But before suggesting you rush out and get one, we thought we'd take it to Belmont Park to give it a trial run. Directions on the back instruct the user to punch in various figures you get from the racing form. Weight, speed ratings, recent finishes. The computer eventually gives back a numbered rating for each horse. The highest number is the horse to bet. Its choice in the first race, a dark brown gelding named Peevish, jogged home fourth. Well, hey, anybody can miss one race. Let's give it a chance at the second. The computer suddenly got red hot. Its picks breezed home in the second and third. It scored again in the sixth with a colt named the Prince's Pants. By now, track patrons were taking more than a mild interest in the invention. One guy kept sidling over inconspicuously, wanting to know what the thing liked. In the seventh, it selected the nine horse, three cousins. Give me the nine across the board. And it would have won two, if they'd scratched the other eight horses in the race. Suddenly, the computer was ice cold. In the eighth, painted wagon ran like it was pulling one, and its pick in the ninth came third. For the day, the racetrack computer had three winners, a second, and a third. If you'd have bet $2 to win, place, and show on each of its nine choices, you'd have risked $54, but you'd have won $59.60, a profit of $5.60. But what if it had bombed? What if it hadn't picked a winner? Well, the inventors got that one covered, too. On the back, way down at the bottom of the instructions, it says, if answers seem wrong, replace battery immediately. <laughs> this is Norm Hitzkus. This is the fake Andy Panda. You better buy your own copy of the entire Norm Hitzke celebrity roast, or I'll maul you. Yeah, we are going to be funny. We brought, actually, I at least wrote a couple of jokes. These are based on the premise that Norm's nose is not regular size. <laughs> Hey, Norm. <laughs> what, Dan? Is, is that your nose, or did a bus park on your face? <laughs> See? Told you we were going to be funny. Hi, I'm Michelle Hope. I'm Natalie Frazier. And we're here at the Norm Hitchcock Celebrity Roast, and you're watching Ticket TV. The Ticket. Good morning to you. I have all the good things to say about Norm. He is a wonderful, wonderful host, and I enjoy his show immensely, even though he is half right. Many people know that I've been on radio now consecutively for 25 years in the Dallas-Fort Worth marketplace, but very few people know I love to write poetry. Published a book in the 70s, and I'm working on a couple more right now. I've got a couple of my favorites for you. To Nancy. What a surprise it was running into you yesterday. After so many years, and in such an unusual place, my dresser drawer. But now, since you're no longer flesh, 
and only a name scribbled on a high school play program. I threw you away to make more room for underwear. Now back to the Majestic for a few of my favorite moments from Pat Summerall and American League umpire Durwood and Merrill from the roast. The first time I met Norm, I was uh, working and living in New York, working with Tom Brookshire. We, we had just started together. So this goes back 24, 25 years ago. And uh, Brookshire was not, he was still in Philadelphia. He couldn't make it to Dallas. I was here and went to a local radio studio. I have no idea what the studio was. And I met Norm. And this guy goes, I guess everybody does an imitation of Norm. <laughs> this guy goes, I said, Tom's back in New York. He, he's coming down. He'll be here. And he said, um, And you're back. I said, That's right. How did you work? How did you work together? How did you start to work together? And I thought, My God. This guy's not as old as he looks. His, his voice hasn't changed yet. Then I heard he went and tried Teflon shots on his throat to deepen his voice. And I found out that he had been a professional pallbearer, or whatever that is. But over the years, as I got to know Norm and got to be associated with him through guest appearances and meeting him at the, that great KLIF location, I got to know what a hard worker, what a knowledgeable person he was and is. And he has all this useless information right at his fingertips. <laughs> it's like John Madden says to somebody who might be on a production staff when they ask all the players all these questions. He says, now you got all that information, what the hell are you going to do with it? So I might ask Norm that same thing. <laughs> what are you going to do with all that information you got? I went to the Hooks internet, and it said when Norm was born, the doctor kicked his daddy in the nuts. to get a bisectomy, and the doc said, with your face, I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> Hell, Norm's idea of a formal is riding in the back of a black Ford pickup. <laughs> said he said that his dad sent him off to school and he stayed in the fourth grade two terms, Truman and Eisenhower. After these commercials, sell, sell, sell. Another one of those Corby Davidson songs. And I feel like I've been working with Norm for 20 years because about 1980, when I moved to Dallas, I was in high school, and my job at the time was to prank call Norm's show every night. <laughs> he was on WFAA and then WBAP, and that was my job, and I did it well. <laughs> Now it's the time of our Ticket TV show to go to the music video from the unbelievable mind of Corby Davidson that he performed at the roast. And then stay tuned for more roast moments and information on how you can get a full, uncensored, what other kind is there at the Ticket, 
tape of the roast. You know who my idol was? I have no idea, Norm. Growing up, Eddie Vedder. Growing up? Oh, he's a big Pearl Jam fan. That's Frito. Frito knows what a big Pearl Jam fan I am. That's right, Norm. Yeah, I, absolutely. I had, no, I had no idea. Oh, I love Pearl Jam. You checked out the new one? No, I haven't. Uh, binaural? No, is it good? Kick ass. Really? Oh, it's kick ass. It's so kick ass. It's kick ass. All right, Corby Davidson joining us here. Uh, Corby. Action, Bob. Hey, everybody. You're watching Ticket Television on K-Star 49. Are we still doing that bit on 49? Yeah. Are you sure we're on 49? Well, at least this week we are. All right. The Ticket. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Thanks for tuning in with me for 25 years in this marketplace. We just barely scratched the surface on this program of all the funny, ridiculous, and wonderful stuff in the roast. Like this. You're laughing, you're laughing too much. You're laughing too much, Norm. You're over laughing, Norm. You're laughing at him. Stop it, Norm, stop! And then there was... I know that I was not the only one in this theater looking over that screen. And thinking, this guy's got great tits. And of course, then there was this moment. There's a few qualities that you have to have. They're essential to have a quality fake norm. One is to begin every sentence, even if you know exactly what you're going to say, with, oh. <laughs> As if you're so contemplative all the time. You can own your own copy of The Roast in its entirety by going to our website, tickettelevision.com. Before we finish, though, I want to tell you that the beneficiaries of those tapes and of the roast were the fine folks at the Austin Street Shelter. It has become the charity of my choice and the charity of my heart over the last few years. This is the model homeless shelter program for the nation, for the world. People from around the world come and visit this place to see how remarkably they handle 
sleeping nearly 400 people a night, feeding thousands of meals a week, job training, drug and alcohol recovery, loads of things. This is a magnificent, magnificent charity. And it's been helped along recently by the fact that Ross Perot Jr., Tom Hicks, and Tom Davis contributed enormous amounts of money, cash, to help them build yet another building that will help lead people out of homelessness, a building called the Pathway Lodge. I'm so proud to have been one of the people to spearhead the effort in the building of this building, and Ticket TV was there for the opening of the Pathway Lodge. All right, this is Bob and Dan. I guess we get to wrap up the Norm Roast. We're at the end. It's either Bob and Dan or Harry from Dumb and Dumber and Tony Clifton, so you be the judge. Ah, Norm. Ah. Hope, my Tony Clifton. Hope you enjoyed the roast on Ticket TV. I hope you didn't enjoy the roast on Ticket TV. Get it? I'm at a roast. I'm insulting. Yeah. Accommodations for guests of Ticket TV are provided by the Hilton Garden Inn, Las Colinas. Oh, this whole thing's bullshit.